ta ta ta. Warm it up. <laughs> Hey guys, my name is Courtney Budson, if you are new here, and this is What's For Din. Today, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to make the trendy and healthy bone broth. Now, let's be honest, I'm not making this because it's trendy. I'm the opposite of trendy. I have no style, if you haven't noticed. <laughs> Not trendy. Not only is bone broth absolutely delicious, but it is filled, filled with tons of good vitamins and nutrients that is really good for the immune system. It's loaded with collagen that is fantastic for your skin. And it also contains glucosamine, which is really, really good for your joints. So if you have arthritis, if you have pain in your joints, and not to mention the glucosamine is great for dogs. I add this to Tucker's meals every single day and he just devours it. It's good for you, it tastes delicious, so you can't lose. So without further ado, let's get started. So obviously the first thing you're gonna need are some bones. Now I'm using beef bones that still have the marrow in the center because it adds a lot of collagen. You can really use any kind of bones you want, chicken bones, fish bones, whatever you have. So we're gonna go ahead and roast these up in the oven. So I'm just lining a baking sheet with some aluminum foil to make the cleanup a lot easier. Place those on the baking sheet and make sure they have enough room so they have good roasting room. Coat those with some olive oil, salt, and pepper to assist with the roasting process. Now, you're probably wondering where in the world do I even find these bones? What you do is you go to your butcher and you ask them for soup bones, and this is usually what they will give you. They're very cheap, very affordable, and actually quite easy to find. So we're gonna throw these in a really hot 450 degree oven until these are nice and golden brown, like really golden. You can almost take them to the charcoal point. Make sure you flip them halfway through and keep in mind that the more color you have on these, the more flavor you're going to have in your bone broth. So while that's happening, you can go ahead and chop up your vegetables. Now I'm just using carrots, celery, onion, garlic, parsley, fresh thyme. You can really use anything you want. Totally up to you. So give those a rough chop. You really don't have to cut these any way fancy. You don't have to peel the carrots. You don't have to peel the skin off the onions or the garlic. Just throw it all in there because it just all adds flavor. Now I will say, and this is very, 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 very important, if you are going to make bone broth for your dog, do not use onions or garlic. Onions are toxic to dogs. It will make them very sick, so do not use it. So we're gonna get some color on these vegetables to add even more flavor, so I'm throwing them in my multi-cooker with some salt, pepper, and olive oil. This multi-cooker makes making bone broth so stinking easy because it has all the settings I could possibly need. I don't have to do it on the stove and worry about leaving everything overnight. It's absolutely perfect. So I'm setting it to the brown setting so that it's really hot and gives a really good golden color to the vegetables. You wanna do this for about 30 minutes or until you see the color developing. And like I said previously, the more color you have, the more flavor you have. So once it's nice and golden, go ahead and transfer all your vegetables to a separate bowl and set that aside. Then we're gonna add our bones right into the same multi-cooker and we're gonna completely cover it with cold water. Now you wanna use cold water because you wanna bring it all up to temperature all at the same time. So as it slowly heats up, it can draw out all of the impurities that are in the bones. So we're setting this to boil for one hour. And like I said, as it starts to simmer, you're gonna see stuff come out like foam. You wanna skim that off. You're gonna see a lot, a lot of fat. Now you don't wanna skim off all of the fat because that's still good for you, but you don't want so much that you're drowning in it. So make sure you take off about half. Once that's done, you can go ahead and add your vegetables back in, along with some fresh parsley, fresh thyme, some black peppercorns, salt, and a very important ingredient is adding apple cider vinegar. This is gonna help pull all of the good stuff out of the bones. Make sure you give that a good toss and make sure everything's just about submerged. You don't wanna have too much water. I'm gonna pop a lid on that and we're gonna change the setting to the low slow cooking mode. And we're gonna set the timer for 24 hours. Now you can totally do this for 12, but I really like a rich deep bone broth. And after it's been slow cooking all that time, you'll lift the lid and you'll see it looks not appetizing. There's gonna be a lot of fat that you need to skim off, but like I said, only skim about half of it because you need that. Then you go ahead and separate the bones and vegetables from the actual broth. And then I like to pass it through a sieve just to make sure I got the clearest bone broth I possibly can. And that is it. You are left with this beautiful, dark, rich bone broth. You can see all of the fat on top. That is not a bad thing. That's actually really, really good for your body. So I like to pour it in some mason jars and put it in the refrigerator to use throughout the week for all sorts of different recipes. And once it cools completely, you're gonna have a layer of fat on the top. All you gotta do is scoop that off and throw it away. And then you're left with this beautiful gelatinous bone broth. Now, if it looks like jello, that's how you know you have a good bone broth. Now, it's not a bad sign if your bone broth doesn't gelatinize. It's happened to me before several times. It's not a big deal. It's still a really good bone broth. 
So to give these to my puppy, I like to put the bone broth in these silicone molds, freeze them, then I can just grab one whenever he wants a snack or he wants to cool down, and I can just add these right to his meals every single day. And that is it. Good boy. So here is the final product. I normally say here's the beautiful final product, but I'm not gonna lie, it's a brown liquid. It's not that pretty. <laughs> so I normally drink this in the morning when I first wake up and it's not 98 degrees, but I made myself a cup and this is how I drink it. <laughs> even though it's like 100 degrees in here and I don't have the air on because it makes too much noise. <sighs> okay, even though it's really hot in here, this is really, really good. And the flavor is so good. I know you guys are gonna love this recipe. If you do wanna recreate this recipe, just look below in the description box. I'll leave all the measurements as well as the written instructions. And if you did like this video, don't forget to smack that like button. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe because I have many more recipes to come. So as always, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me and we'll see you next time. Pinkies up.